Hello, tea timers. So um, today I am drinking my Murchie's Library Blend. It was one of the ones that I had in the running for the um, the box, this box thing that makes Cozy Tea Time Collection. It was one of the ones in running, but I could only use four. So I did the number 10, the Murchie's Afternoon, Darjeeling and Jasmine Pure, but um, Library Blend was one of the close runner ups. I really like it. It's a combination of um, green tea and um, black teas and it's it's a it's a mix between if you like a strong tea and you like more of a like a green tea jasmine oh no I don't know if it even has jasmine but it smells a little bit like there might be a touch of it in there I didn't read the back I just taste teas and then like them it's nice oh speaking of my um the collection I'm not sure if they're going to be doing it after Christmas. So if you want to order it, it makes a really nice present for people that you're like, oh, I have to get presents for a bunch of people. <laughs> well, at least I think it does. If you did my um, collection with one of my books for people, they'd probably think like that was really nice. If they, if, <laughs> if they were tea drinkers and if they liked reading uh, romantic suspense, if they didn't, they might think you'd lost your mind. <laughs> but, um, it's something to unwrap. It's better than a box of chocolates. Well, it depends if you really like chocolates and it might not be. So let's see what else. Oh, there was something else I wanted to let you know. My friend Casey Dyer is having her book launch on December 16th at the Love's Arrow bookstore. I think it's called something like that. And I'll have the information underneath and I'm gonna be hosting it. So I'll be asking her questions. It'll probably be pretty fun because um, Casey's, uh, I've known her, now I've known Karen, Casey. <laughs> She's, I, I call her Karen, but her, her, her writing name is Casey Dyer, lowercase. And um, I've known her since I came out with my second book and she works with the Surrey International Writers Conference and I had contacted them and she got back to me about going with my second book and they had already booked all their speakers, but she said, but I'll keep you in mind for the following year. And she did. And we just got to know each other. And when I lived in Vancouver for a period of time, we went on walks. So she had her dogs. Um, and I had mine and we'd go tromping through the woods. Uh, we'd meet up, I can't remember, it might've been a couple times a week and we'd just go on long walks with our big dogs and they'd go galloping around with their tongues lolling out of their mouths and um, just mud and muck and rain and sun and snow. And I really miss those walks and with Care Casey, um, that was one of the things that I missed most when I moved away from Vancouver. So, um, you'll get to meet her. I've known her for a very long time since my boy Will was still in school and now he's he's married and in a 30s. So <laughs> I, I've known her for a long time and she's just a lovely person and I'm reading her book, An Accidental Odyssey, and I'm really enjoying it. So I hope you guys will uh, join us and we'll chat. I remember when I first met her, now I don't know because I, I don't live close to her anymore, but she used to always wear wildly patterned uh, stockings. <laughs> and, uh, and she just was like, it was just like, I'm gonna enjoy life. And, and it just made you smile every time you saw it. So, you know, every time you saw her with, and sometimes I remember once she had stockings where one stocking was one pattern and color and the other stocking was another pattern and color. Now, I don't know if she found those stockings and they were that way or if she took two and put them together. But anyway, I'll be doing a talk uh, to help launch her new book. And um, I hope you guys join us. Now I'll answer some questions. Oh, also, um, because of the supply chain issues, uh, she had sent me, her publisher had sent me a book so I could show you the cover, but I don't have the book. If it comes, then I'll show it to you next week. Um, but if it doesn't, then, oh, well, you'll, you'll see it on, on the, on the link. They'll be on the link. Also, my friend, you remember, um, well, I've talked about Jane Ann Krentz enough, so my tea timers know my my uh, love for Jane Ann Krentz and all things Jane Ann Krentz. While her, she writes under Jane Castle, and her new Jane Castle book came out this last week as well, called Guild Boss, and I ordered that as well because um, 
I had ordered her last book, which was written under her Amanda Quick name, because um, I like to really, really support my local bookstores. So I, I had ordered it way in advance, but it didn't come till well after her launch date. I don't know if you tea times remember, I, I had to get up in the 20s uh, sequin dress to try to say like, yay, happy launch day, but I didn't have the book to wave around till a couple weeks later. And then when I finally got the book, because I called the bookstore, like, where's my book? Where's my book? When I finally got the book and I dove into it and was reading it, there were cookie crumbs in it. <laughs> so somebody else really liked her her book as well. Um, so so this time I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to do the thing I never do and go with the big conglomerate because I want to make sure I get her book so I have it to show you guys on launch day to help support it because Jane's been such a mentor to me and such uh, just just in a personal way in terms of reading her books for decades, but also in a writerly way since I've met her when I started writing Romantic Suspense and she was the first person to blurb my, my um, Solace Island book and gave me a, a beautiful blurb and and I was so stunned that Jane Ann Krentz knew I was alive. <laughs> so she's just really incredibly generous. So her book, uh, Jane Castle book, is called Guild Boss. And it's out, but I don't have it to show you either because I went with a big conglomerate. And when I got back from my trip from my sisters, I thought I'd have the book in my hot little hand. And instead, we got a message saying that due to shipping uh, issues, uh, challenges, that not only was my book not late, they weren't going to send it at all. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. But, you know, it's a small inconvenience. Small, very small, minuscule, not even on the spectrum in terms of what um, other people in BC are going through. So I know that it's, um, ah, man, it's all this rain. Holy smokes. You, you, my heart just bleeds, bleeds for them. And, and my pocketbook, too. <laughs> Because, you know, you, you do what you can, but um, I better read some questions. Let's see. Uh, yeah, for those of you who like, uh, you know, a, a breakfast tea, but, but not a breakfast tea, like a strong tea, but a little bit lighter with other, this is really nice library blend. I think you'll like it. Oops, this is upside down. Oh, wow. I wasn't planning on reading this, but you know, I'm always a believer in um, meant to be. So here's something from way in the beginning because I thought I was on the back, but it was upside down. So this is uh, Amina Farah. Greetings from Italy. Lovely story about how you went back to acting, but I'm curious to know why you left if it's not too intrusive. I might have mentioned this in another one, um, but um, how I left was, I had always thought that, uh, I, I would always thought that my, I could just bring my children out of school, which is what I did, whenever I shot a movie. So I would take them with me, I would get their classes from school. It was really easy when they were babies. I mean, not really easy because you're nursing or you're taking care of and but they give you a big trailer that you can keep your that your daughter or your son you know your children can be in and you can have like my sister would help me my mom helped me I had a, a, a housekeeper who helped me um, so you can have somebody who can help you and there's a lot there was a lot of downtime when you're shooting because feature film because they're lighting so meticulously to try to get the look just so so you can have hours and hours down and then go back in so i was able to be present for for most of the time and then have to go in shoot the scene blah 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 come back so um that worked pretty well and sometimes if I was going to have scenes where there was a lot of really difficult emotional stuff and and I would have to stay on set and try to be in character, then of course they would stay with my sister at the, at the house that they would rent, you know, the temporary furnished house that I rent on set. And, um, and Becky would help me and um, I would see them when I got home. But um, 
And that worked for that worked when they were before school, like in, in preschool and then in school for the first few years. But then uh, it got difficult because I remember I, I had pulled everybody out just like I always did and did this movie, Leaving Normal. And um, my children were with me. And then, you know, there were, except for there were little periods where they weren't, but mostly they were with me. But then when we came back, um, her best friend was best friends with someone else and it was a small school and there weren't other kids all the girls were paired up and she was the odd man out and it was really really difficult for her and I'm a person I guess I always then fast forward to um, the future and okay if this happens and what would happen here and what would happen here and what would happen here and I knew a lot of actors who had uh, children who were, you know, older, who were going through terrible, terrible troubles. And I got worried because I thought, okay, coming from my childhood, I'm not comfortable having someone else raise my ch children. I'm not comfortable going away. A movie takes three to six months to go away and be gone for that amount of time and to keep a career going. In those days, it took three to six months. Now, movies are shot faster, way faster. But in those days, you had to do one movie a year, sometimes two, in order to keep your career and the momentum going. And I just thought, I just unspiraled it to, you know, all sorts of terrible fears for when they were older and, you know, teenagers and without my supervision. And I'd, I'd see other people's kids, like just uh, actors and just a train wreck. So I decided I was gonna do as much work as I could make as much money as I could, save it, sock it away. And when I had enough that I thought I could survive on and my kids could, I was gonna quit. So that's what I did. So um, that's why I stopped acting. That, and add on to that, that I had a very, very challenging time with the director on that movie as well. So it, it, was, it was a collision of several different things that seemed to say, do you want this? Like like uh, to deal with people like this um because he he was he was he was he threw a chair <laughs> he threw a chair at my head and did other really bad things he was not a not a he he was he was a challenge man i mean i don't know if other people had had the kind of challenges i had with them but it certainly doesn't make you think like ooh, cozy safe let's let's go create something so anyway it was a multitude of things but mostly it was the my children thing because i'd worked with jerky directors before and um, people in power before who behaved badly and it didn't stop me from acting i think it was the combination of oh my gosh i'm i i mean i have to support my kids and i'm doing this to build a life for them but i you know it's it's for their their good and i'm able to create a safe place for them and 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 hopefully a you know, as happy a home as I can and, you know, give give us emotional and financial security because I was able to work for a few months out of the year and then be home for the rest of the year other than having to go audition for things and stuff. But then when it was like, oh, pulling them out all the time so that they don't have continuity of friends or family, even though we still moved a bit after that, not only is this really challenging for me to get through with some of the you know behavior on set and stuff but now it's starting to hurt them also i was um i was it was challenging as well being a mom um and having people you know when you're dealing with your children and having people you know hip check them out of the way or not let not be aware that you're a mother first and you're dealing with your children who might be, you know, needing your attention um, because they were excited. Look, hey, I know <laughs> I get excited when I meet people who I looked up to. So I get it. But but I just weighed things together and and made that decision. Wow, I, I sure wasn't expected to talk about that at all. OK, I'll answer another uh, question. Um, Starry Cat. I hope you continue writing. I thoroughly enjoyed your Solace Island series. And every time I dip into those pages, I can see it in my mind and think it would make an amazing Netflix series. Aw, <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Starry Cat. I think it would probably make a really good um, show as well. But luckily, because I've been in the movies, I don't hold out that like, oh, I, I hope, I hope, I hope. Because, you know, I've, I've written so many, I've written scripts. I've had my, my other books of mine purchased and, you know, beautiful scripts have been written and they haven't been made. So, but thank you. It was so nice of you. Okay, Paul Net 2001 um, or 2001 Net. Don't forget, you didn't think of writing as a job at first. And look how much you accomplished then. You're a writer anytime you feel like writing, and there will always be people interested in your great writing. <laughs> so there's no need for all this talk about the <clears throat> R word. <laughs> well, thank you. That's 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 so nice of you. And um, yeah, I'm I'm yeah. You know, I last week I was kind of thinking I'm I might and I think I've given myself enough time that I'm starting to be like, well, and your guys, it's encouragement. Here's another one, uh, 11 Santa Rose. Being already financially solvent, I guess the choice to retire would be based on how much do you actually still enjoy writing? If you still love doing it, don't quit. No, doesn't matter if no one reads it and you do it for your own shits and giggles. <laughs> if it brings you joy, Keep doing it. Uh, so um, that's really nice, all of you. Oh, and here's another one. Um, Elizabeth Pierre. I find myself looking forward to your videos. Your shine reaches into my life and brings a gentle undoing of knots and blocks. You're my favorite supplemental war warmth. Your YouTube videos mean a lot to me. Ah, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Pierre, and um, I have to say, I um, y this comment meant a lot to me too. It's just to be somebody's favorite supplemental warmth. That's like such a beautiful compliment. And I'm really, really glad. And it sounds like you might be a writer as well, just the way you describe describe things. So anyway, oh my gosh, 1717. Um, so lots of love to all of you and I will see you in December. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.